Hey Grace Posse, welcome back to the Daily Devotion. Hope you guys are doing well. Our scripture of focus is going to be Titus 2.11, which says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Today we're going to be talking about can't do it ourselves. Our passage reading is going to be Titus 2, 11 through 13, which says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessing, our blessed hope, and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. What would you think if you went to buy a car and the salesman told you that you either had to push it everywhere you went or pay extra extra for an engine. You know something was was wrong because that's just not how it works. The engine is part of the purchase price of the car. When I look at Christians who are living defeated lives, I see people who are pushing their Christian lives. They don't realize that the power that they need is already under the hood. The power of operates in the grace of God, which is an inexhaustible supply of goodness, by which He does for us what we can't do for ourselves, which is what I think is the greatest definition of what grace is all about. Some of us have the misconception that we have the power to pull off, pull off the Christian life. But if that were true, we would be no different than a non-Christian who keeps the Ten Commandments. It's all human effort. But God has endowed every true believer with the abundant supply of His grace. Grace is not well understood today because it's used so flippantly or without proper understanding of what it involves. That's really sad because there's a lot involved. The grace of God is possible because of the sacrifice His Son made for our salvation. The only reason we are alive today and not consumed is because of what Jesus did. And the only reason we are going to heaven is because of what Jesus did as it tells us in Ephesians 2 8 and 9. The appearance of God's grace is the coming of Jesus Christ to earth to die for us and to bring us salvation. Most of us have suffered the embarrassment of bouncing a check because of insufficient funds. But there is no such thing as insufficient grace. God's got some grace for every need that you and I have. And Paul tells us in today's verse that God's grace also trains us on how to live the victorious Christian life. Grace will give you the victory where it didn't, you didn't have victory. Grace will give you power where you didn't have power. Grace will give you the ability to keep on keeping on when you want to give up. Do you need more grace? God's got it. James 4 6 so here's something to think about since God is full of grace you and I can keep coming back for more and that's worthy of praising him for today so we've made it to Friday and so this reflection time so let's look at something that and reflect on what we've talked about this week do you feel that you know God a little better this week uh, than you did last week that's my prayer because, as I said in the beginning, it's the most important adventure you could ever take. This week we've considered five more facets of God's perfect and glorious character. Can you name them without looking? I'll tell you what. I'll name the five attributes or traits for you. Then I want you to suggest a fun exercise that you can help or can do to help your reflection for this week. First, the five attributes. God's Word, His goodness, His wrath, His love, and His grace. Now the exercise. Take a piece of paper and write down each of these five things, leaving plenty of space between each. 
for each of them, write out your own definition, and then add what this attribute or trait means to you personally. The difference it has made in your life. Since we're on uh, only in the third week of the of this study, it's most likely uh, still cool in some places. We're getting into spring. Why not do this one in front of a warm fire, cold, curled up on the curled up on the couch uh, with a with a blanket? If it's too warm, then maybe you consider sitting outside on. The, the porch and listening to the birds. And when you're done, share your stuff with your spouse or your favorite someone or someone else in your family. God bless you guys, and I'll see you next time.